We're gonna be doing some myth busting involving the new features of Season 12 in Sea of Thieves. I figured out some pretty crazy stuff when testing, so make sure that you watch the whole video so you can see all of it. I guarantee you'll learn something new. You know how there's three tiers of hull damage on boats? Well, is that still true in Season 12? Huh? The answer is no, as there's now five tiers of hull damage. The two new tiers are essentially tier one and a half and tier two and a half. Now that there's five tiers of hulls, you can essentially say that as you go up each tier, you are getting 20% closer to the hull being full fully damaged and open. This is important to know because the new scatter shots do 20% damage per ball that hits, and it shoots 4 balls per shot, versus a regular cannonball which does 60%. So you're probably wondering, well if I hit all 4 balls of scatter shot on one position in a boat, does it do an 80% damage hole? Well the answer to that is no, because per shot of scatter shot, you can only do maximum 40 damage to one hole position on the boat. You can only do 80% total if it's spread amongst a bunch of different holes. Here's a chart I made so you can better understand this. It shows you the potential total hole damage depending on how many shots of the four scatter shot that you hit on an enemy boat, and how many holes those shots make every time you take a shot of scatter shot. Feel free to pause the video or come back to this at a later point. Let's now see how many scatter shot come with your boat when you spawn in. As you can see, it's three per barrel. That means that there's six on the sloop and nine on both the brigantine and the galleon. But can you buy extra from the captain's supply shop? The answer is no, you do not get extra with captain's supplies. Let's test if regular cannonballs and scatter shot load into cannons at the same rate. As you can tell, they do. Let's now get into testing the new harpoon feature that allows you to walk on them. We'll start by figuring out at what height angle can you no longer walk across them. As you can see, this is the exact point that the harpoon becomes too steep for you to be able to balance across it. If I move it down ever so slightly, I'm now able to balance on the rope. Here's how the point at which the harpoon becomes too steep to climb on looks like. And here's how the point at which it becomes climbable looks like. But at what exact angle does it actually become climbable? Well, um, according to my calculations. I put it into Photoshop, and when I matched my line angle with the line angle of the harpoon, I got a measurement of negative 159.3 degrees, which translates to 20.7 degrees. That was the measurement for when it becomes unclimbable. When I did the same thing with the image of it being climbable, I got a measurement of negative 160 degrees, which translates to 20 degrees. So it's safe to say that the steepest angle you can climb is 20 degrees. But at what angle does being able to climb across the rope become having to slide down the rope? Here's the max decline which you can walk across. And here's the starting point of when you'll have to slide. Wait a minute, did you catch that? He was sliding into the like and subscribe buttons, which is exactly what you should do if you're enjoying the video so far. Honestly, I didn't know how else to segue this because my brain is completely gone at 6 a.m. while I haven't had any sleep because I'm staying up editing this video for you guys because I love you so much. So yeah, make sure you do that. When I put it into Photoshop, the highest decline angle which you can still walk across is 163.8 degrees, which translates to negative 16.2 degrees. And when I put the point at which you start having to slide into Photoshop, I get a measurement of 162.5 degrees, which translates to negative 17.5 degrees. So it's safe to say that at negative 17.5 degrees on the harpoon angle is when you will start sliding. Now let's test if you can carry loot across a harpoon. The answer is yes, but can you drop loot off of a harpoon? If walking across it normally, you can't. But you can do a special trick where if you jump off the harpoon, you drop the loot well midair and then you re-grab onto the harpoon and can continue walking across. But can you sprint across harpoons? Yes, you can. Here's walking, and here's sprinting. Can you walk backwards on harpoons? Yes, you can. What about changing direction while on a harpoon? Yeah, you can do that as well. All you need to do is jump off the harpoon and while in the air, turn 180 degrees and then re-grab the harpoon. But can you levitate on the harpoon? Surprisingly, yes. It's kind of like bunny hopping, but if you spam jump off and re-grab it a bunch repeatedly, you'll somewhat float around. Let's now see if it's possible to mount a harpoon in the middle of it rather than having to start on one of the ends. Yep, it's possible. Now for probably the most interesting idea, can you use weapons while on the harpoon? Yeah, you can. And if you want to do what I just did, all you have to do is jump off while on the harpoon and pulling your gun out at the same time, shoot it while still in midair, and then once you shoot it, press the button to switch to the other weapon while still in midair, then re-grab onto the harpoon, jump back off the harpoon, 
pull out the other weapon, shoot it while in midair, and then re-grab the harpoon and continue walking across. Yeah, it's quite a lot. <laughs> Here's another cool way that you can board enemies in Season 12, but this time using the new Horn of Fair Winds. But can the person getting boarded counter the border by using the Horn of Fair Winds? Yep, they sure can. What about a border coming up the ladder? Yep. And what about the other boat interactions? While I'm showing you the different boat interactions that you can blow people off of, keep in mind there's still a lot of cool testing to be done in the rest of this video, such as testing the new weapons and bone collars. If you've made it this far into the video, leave a comment saying Bucket Chad Gaming. You can blow people off of every boat interaction, so you're probably wondering how long can you actually use the Horn of Fairwinds for? I'm not going to bore you with unedited footage of how long it lasts for, but it lasts for 100 seconds. And as you can see, the more you continue to blow and use it, the more its color starts to fade away, until it becomes completely faded and can no longer blow. If you want to reset its durability and get it back to max, you can put it in a treasure chest and then bury it and re-dig up the treasure chest and it'll be reset. We all know that you can use the horn to make robots go faster, but if you have someone using the horn on the back to make the boat go faster, as well as someone rowing the boat, can you catch a boat that has its masts fully dropped? He was blowing for the whole duration of the horn, and I was rowing the entire time, and we were unable to catch our boat. But can you use two horns to go double the speed on a rowboat? The answer is no, and while trying, you'll either accidentally end up blowing your teammate off, or it'll just be hard to actually control where you want the rowboat to go, and you'll start accidentally spinning around. Once you've fully used up a horn, you're probably wondering, does a fully used one sell for the same price as a perfectly new one? As you can see, I got 903 gold for a fully new one. The plus 1000 was just for some challenge or something. When selling the fully used one, I actually got more gold, which was 967. That's because when selling these, there's no one set price and it's actually a price range, but both of them will sell for the same. Let's get on to testing the bone collars. Let's start by seeing if you get them when you buy throwables from the captain shop. The answer is no. When you throw one bone collar, it spawns three skeletons for you. But can you make a skeleton army by throwing multiple bone collars at once? As you can see, the answer is no, because when you throw the second bone collar, while you still have skeletons spawned in, it despawns the original skeletons and just spawns three new ones. But how long did the skeletons last for? The first one lasts for one minute. The second one lasts for about a minute and five and a half seconds. And the third one lasts for about a minute and 11 and a half seconds. Now let's talk about their spawn positions. They'll always spawn on the top deck of the boat. This means even if the ball hits the side of the hull, or even if the bone collar is thrown in the crow's nest. Now let's get to testing the new throwing knives. Let's start with what you can throw them through on a boat. Can they be thrown through the grade of boats? Yep, they can. What about the cannon? Yeah, that also works. How about the canopy of a sloop? Nope, that doesn't work. How about a boat stairs, since you're able to shoot through them with regular guns? The throwing knives actually do not go through the stairs. What about the wheel of a boat? Nope, that doesn't work either. Now let's see how many you can have thrown in the ground at once. As you can see, I had five on the left, and as I continue to throw more, the ones on the left start to despawn. You're only able to have five in the ground at once. Since you can have five in the ground at once, can you throw five on your anchor to make it harder for people to drop your anchor and end up interacting with a knife on accident? Yeah, that's possible. But can you put the throwing knives into the ground and then go and switch to another weapon besides the throwing knives and then have your throwing knives for later to pick up off the ground? As you can see, that's possible. But when you pick the throwing knives up off the ground, you aren't able to use them for stabbing and you only have the option to throw them. Now let's check out the double barrel flintlock. Do both bullets shot from the flintlock hit the same position? As you can see, it's not the exact same position, but it basically is. Okay, now let's test if Sea of Thieves is still a broken game. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a comment letting me know your favorite part as well as like and subscribe and share it with friends. Peace.